Hello everybody and welcome to your next tutorial. This should be a fairly easy tutorial and what you're going to be learning is a little bit of views and how to do screen scrolling. Now views aren't just used for screen scrolling. You can zoom in, zoom out, um, do different effects with views. That will be for the next tutorial but this tutorial we're going to be learning how to manipulate views in order to do screen scrolling. Now screen scrolling is pretty simple. You just manipulate all you're doing is screen scrolling is basically an illusion just like an animation is an illusion if we looked into our last tutorial what our player animation was doing was just taking a series of pictures and moving them so quickly that it seems that the player is actually doing an animation or a walking motion much like screen scrolling, what screen scrolling does is that it shows a different section of the screen at a particular time to make it seem as though you're walking through the game world, but all you're really doing is just modifying the camera. So you could call it an illusion if you want, you could call it just whatever, but mo more so all you're doing is just changing the camera's position to make it look that the player is look as though the player is walking through the game world. Now, other ways of doing screen scrolling is that you can actually scroll the game, sc scroll the game map to look as though, or the background or whatever to see to make it seem as though the player is indeed moving. Or you could use transform matrices or anything like that. But with SFML, SFML is equipped with views which makes your life a lot easier. That's why people say that SFML is really easy because it equips a lot of things that make your life easier. So for this tutorial, we'll, you'll want to make a background image that is greater than the actual screen's width and height so then you can actually visually see the scrolling going on. So once you've created that you want to put that in your project folder and name it background or whatever you want to name it so before we begin we're going to make a header file called global.h not a cpp file as well not an implementation file that's what it's called if you guys want to know but we just want to make a header file and how we do this is that we can go up here either go up here and click new file or go to file and empty file or click control shift n and then you name it global.h and save in the project folder and what we're going to do is taking the define the screen width and height from the main.cpp and putting it in global.h the reason being is that once we create our camera class we are going to want to use the screen width and height in our camera class so instead of just having main.cpp we store it in a header file so all we have to, all we have to do is include the header file which is global.h in both main.cpp and in our global dot and into our camera h class and we can both use the screen within screen height heights property another good thing about this is that if i want to modify the screen within height in my global dot h then it will change it accordingly throughout the whole program and i won't have to go and modify the main dot cpp and camera h as well that's the beauty about it so once you do that, you want to create a class the same way that you've created before. You want to go to File, New, Class, Create a Camera Class. And in the Camera Class, when it's created for you, you want to include Global.h and you want to include the Graphics.hpp like we've been using for a lot of our tutorials. After that, we want to create three functions. Now the initialize function is not needed, but it's there if you want to make your code neater or whatever you like, but you don't really need it. We have our initialize function, our update function, the draw function. The update function is going to take two values in the parameters that are of integer type, which is going to be an x value and a y value, and this is going to be for the player x and player y. So if you want to remember that, you can either change it, you can change these values to player x and player y if you would like. So in our draw we're going to be making a reference to our actual render window so we can set the view so then we can actually get our actually get our scrolling animation going on so what we have to do is actually create a view and the view class is from graphics.hpp so we get the view by doing sf colon colon view and we named I named it camera position and I made two floats types called camera x and camera y which is going to actually store the camera the 
the the camera's X position and the camera's Y position, and then store it in camera position so we can then display it on the screen. And these can either be in the protected section or the private section. Uh, you could put it in public if you want, but if you want to get used to object-oriented programming, then you want to make it more so you'd want to make this private and if you're using inheritance and you wanted to inherit these values then you could put it as protected anyways uh, that's just more on encapsulation if you like to know so for our initialize function we set camera x and camera y to zero why I say that's not needed is because at the beginning of the update function we actually set a new value for our camera x and camera y so this really isn't needed right here but you could do it just if you like to so at the beginning of our update remember this is player x and player y so we say that camera x is equal to negative screen width divided by 2 plus player x so what is this thing right here well our animation is going to start the screen effect the screen scrolling effect is going to start scrolling once a player has reached the center point of the screen once the player has reached the center of the screen then the screen will start scrolling to make it look like the player is going through the game world now you might be asking why do I do it at the center well a lot of games have that effect you just haven't really noticed it if you play Mario or Donkey Kong or all those games you notice that the scrolling effect really happens once the players reach the center of the screen and then the view changes and it looks like the players are walking through the game window but uh, through the game screen but in reality if you really look at it the player is centered in the screen if you know what I mean so you guys can check that out if you like so if we look right here what is it saying is that I I did this I did the brackets you really don't need the brackets here I just did this to be uh, more organized I guess and to more follow rules of bed mass and whatnot it doesn't matter because it will still get even if without the brackets due to bed mass it would do the division first and then add second and if you don't know what bed mass or bed mass whatever you like to call it if you don't really know what that means you can search it up it's B-E-D-M-A-S it's basically for math in the order or the sequence which things should be calculated so anyways the screen width is equal to 800 pixels so saying this is equal to 800 divided by 2 and then since I have the negative sign out here then it will set it to negative 400 so saying negative 400 plus X that's what I'm setting my camera X position so we want to start scrolling once the player reaches the center of the screen correct so I so say the camera the the player's X position is 403 pixels then we do negative 400 plus 403 that will give us a, that will give us a value of 3 so then we will start drawing from the third pixel on the third pixel on the screen and then start drawing from 800 pixels from that so we draw from pixel 3 to pixel 803 and then after that it will give us a scrolling effect and if you really don't understand that then you will understand it by the end of this tutorial so if you guys are saying why am I doing it this way the more complicated way well if you guys want to make it easier on yourselves I've commented out right here all you really want to all you have to do is just change um, around the sequence of things you just put X minus screen width divided by 2 and Y minus screen height divided by 2 it's the exact same equation it's just flipped over so I'll just show you what it looks like this way so with this method the way I have it right here oh I just need to wait for it to compile so okay so with this way screen scrolls once you reach the center of the screen screen scrolls etc and if I'm to comment this out right here and I uncomment this block right here you will get the same results as if you were to use the same formula as above and to show you the results I'm just going to build this and I'm gonna run it so if you look the animation it still scrolls does still does a scrolling animation like it's supposed to 
so I'm gonna reset it to what I had before so now we're gonna look at these two if statements right here now we're just saying that if the camera X value is less than zero then we reset it to zero and if camera Y is less than zero then we reset it to zero now some of you might be asking why not put else if there well the reason why we don't do else if is that there could be a possibility that these two statements are indeed true at the same time example that if the x and y coordinates are set to zero then these both camera x and camera y will be less than zero and we will want to change both to zero if we have else if there then it will change camera x to zero but it will not execute this statement as well so we put the if there so it can execute both statements if needed so if we look at our camera position there's different ways to indeed alternate um, to calculate views you could do it by setting the center so you could centerize the view on the screen where you want to actually draw the view or you can use the half size or you can do set from rect and I'm not sure if there's any others but you can check on the SFML documentation I'm showing you the set from rect way, the way of going about it because we've already learned about shapes and we've learned about other things that we have to use um, our, the rect so you've been familiar with using these and what this is going to be doing is that we're going to be specifying a rectangular area where we should start drawing from on the screen and then we will display on our viewpoint which is our screen so we do like this camera position and if you don't remember that is from the we created a view called camera position in our camera dot h so we say camera position dot set from rect and in the parameters we put sfl colon colon float rect meaning that it all these are going to be should be floating point values and we'll return a floating point value so we say that we start drawing we start the view drawing the view from camera x and camera y for x1 and y1 and for the x2 and y2 we end drawing at camera x plus screen width and for our y2 we end drawing at camera y plus screen height now what does this do for us well it sets it so that when the player is at the center of the screen then it will end up doing a scrolling animation and how do we do this well we all these work together in order to do this so say the player x position and player y position are equal to zero camera x will be equal to negative 400 camera y will be equal to negative 300 so we we'll reset this to zero since it's less than zero and therefore start drawing from the coordinate 0 to 800 and the draw from the coordinate 0 to 600 so it won't be scrolling at all but say the x position is at position 403 that that means the player is farther than the halfway point in the screen and therefore camera x will be equal to 3 so this statement won't get executed because it's not true so we'll go here it will say okay start drawing from the third pixel and end drawing from 3 plus 800 which is equal to 803 so then when we shift the so when we shift the camera to doing like that to that view then it will look as though the player will remain in the center of the screen but it will look as though you were actually indeed moving through the game world so that is basically how it goes about how we go about actually doing our animation and if you look at our draw function right here we see window dot set view and then all this does is that we just set the view to the view that we've created or we've modified and we just place it in here that's why we need to get a reference to the window right here so we do all that but we need to go back to our player dot h and add in two more functions and these are going to be float functions to get the x value and get the y now you might be saying why we're doing this why can't we just make float x and y public well in good prog with good programming practices you would you wouldn't do that you would just have it right here the reason being is that say you're working in a team or you're giving somebody else your own code if they know that the, if x and y are private variables and they know that the x and y values aren't supposed to be touched so if you have a get x and a get y 
position, then they know that they should only x should be only be used to be getting the value and you shouldn't be setting a new position for x. If you were to set like a set function right here, that would set the x position and then you put in a value whatever of some sort. So if you had like a set if you had a set function then they would know that you can either get the x position or set a new position for x. But now if a new program was to take a look at your code or was to code, then they would say, oh, they don't want us to actually modify the x position outside of this class. They only want us to get the value. And that's good, like say you have an engine or something that you want to give to somebody else or you're distributing an engine. You don't want people to mess with the core functionality of an engine and these little variables can actually be core f core features of the engine and if they modify the, modify the values your engine can crash so the reason to prevent this is that you said it that we've we have get x and get y so we don't have a set function so people know that or we know if we forget if we put this code away and then we get we start using it again we know that we shouldn't be changing the value for x outside of the player class so that's just a little knowledge right there. So we have two get functions right here, and we can call these properties. Like that's what C# -sharp calls them, but it's what uh, it's up to you. So in player.cpp, we just say float player colon colon get. We return x, and we turn y. We return y in our get y function. So if we go to our main.cpp, now you can you can it's up to you if you want to incorporate your camera class inside your player class you could do that if you want it's up to you I just did this to make it easier on you guys so we've created an instance of camera of the camera class and we initialize the camera we don't really need to do that if we don't want to and then the order of this is important so we do the actual players update and stuff and then we do the cameras update since the camera update relies on the player's movement then we need to do the player's update first before we modify the camera so we get the proper modifications so we say that player we do regular player update camera update and then the parameters we do player dot get x which is our get function and player dot get y which is our get y function and then also before I move on for loading our background image I just did this simply right here create our image background image our sprite background sprite loaded the background image and set the sprite to the image so right here we clear the window then we did camera dot draw first so then we actually draw the modified camera then we draw our background sprite we draw our player and then we display everything to the display and once you you will have your game up and running so if we look at it one last time just waiting for it to compile so you can scroll down in the y coordinates and you could scroll right for the x coordinates so that is it for this tutorial hope you enjoyed this and bye